welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today's Friday, happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week. Uh, for today's video, I have a thrift flip for you. Uh, and it was one item, but I made it extremely difficult on myself and it was a very time consuming process. Uh, you'll see what I mean in the video ahead. And I kept it kind of simple today because I do have an announcement that I wanna share with you guys at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. I've got some exciting news to share. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to today's project. So my project for today is this cute little shelving unit that I picked up not too long ago on a thrift run that we made over on the west side when we went over to pick up plants. The first step with any project is to get it clean. And so I sprayed this guy down with some crud cutter, wiped that off with a shop towel, and then sprayed it down again with some clean water and washed it off again just to make sure and get rid of any of that crud cutter residue. Now for this piece, I had already picked out a decoupage paper that I wanted to use on the shelves on the inside. And to make it really difficult on myself, I decided to paint the outside of this black. And for that, I'm using DIY's color Little Black Dress. And I painted the entire outside, trying to be as careful as possible to not get any of that black paint on the inside of the piece. Other than I did flip it over on its top and painted the underside of the shelves and also the bottom of this piece just in case somebody hung it on a wall and for some reason you were able to see the bottom of it. So I gave it one good even coat of little black dress and then I gave it another, I'd call it like a half coat where I went over it in just places that uh, you could still see that very, very light wood color kind of showing through. Uh, and then once that was done and I was finally done with the black paint, it was on to starting with the uh, interior of the piece. And for that, I picked DIY's crinoline. For this part, I used a much smaller brush so that I had a little bit more control over where the paint was going and just kind of worked in smaller sections a little bit at a time, painting that white on, being very, very careful not to go over the black. Once the paint was completely dry, I had a few rough areas. I think just because the finish of this was so slick that occasionally the paint would start to pull just a little bit as I was painting it. And in those areas, it left just little rough patches. So I took some 220 grit sandpaper and my sanding block, gave it a good sand, trying to be, again, really careful to not mix the white with the black, and then wiped it back down with a damp paper towel. Once that part was done, I moved on to distressing the black portion of this cabinet. So again, I just grabbed a damp shop towel and anywhere where I wanted a little bit of that blonde wood showing through, I would just wet distress it and bring that uh, wood back through the paint. I didn't do a lot of distressing. I really didn't want this to be overly distressed, but I did want to show off some of the really cute details in this piece. Now, obviously, if you don't like the distressed look, you can absolutely leave this step out. Once that was done and it was dry again, it was on to sealing my piece. Now, I started on the inside and I didn't get any video of that, but I sealed the white paint first, then did the black. And I'm sealing using Big Top. And the reason I did it that way was that when you are sealing, sometimes with a liquid sealer, it can reactivate your paint just a little. And I didn't want to transfer any of that back onto the white and since the white's already sealed if I did I could just wipe it right back off then I measured my shelves just making sure they were all the same length and then measured width and for the decoupage portion of this cabinet I am using Roy Cycled Treasures decoupage paper called grungy floral I absolutely love this paper I think it's so beautiful and it's a perfect fit for this cabinet I cut my paper to length and then left it just a little bit wider than the shelf. Then it was on to putting down my decoupage medium. And for this, I'm using DIY's clear liquid patina. Then I kind of folded my paper in half so that I could get that one end laid down really flush against the, the side of the shelf. 
Then I kind of unfurled it and just smoothed it down with my hand. Then it was time to add one more coat of the liquid patina to the top of the paper, giving it a nice even coat and making sure that there weren't any bubbles or wrinkles in the paper. Once that was done and it was completely dry, I took some 220 grit sandpaper and in a downward sweeping motion, just sanded off the little lip of paper that I had left behind. Now as a last step for this piece, I decided that the crinoline was a little bit too stark in contrast with the grunginess of the paper. So I decided to go in with some dark wax over that big top. I started by just applying one kind of liquid coat. I used a little bit of mineral spirits to thin out the dark wax, then wipe that back with a paper towel. And then I went and did a little bit of shading just around the edges and then kind of dab, dab, dabbed it with a paper towel to make it look kind of grungy and match the paper. I also went ahead and gave the entire black portion of this cabinet a good coat of the dark wax as well wiping it back with a shop towel as I went just to kind of cut down a little bit of the sheen of the big top and give this more of a matte appearance. This is me going over the grungy florals with a little bit of dark wax just kind of around the edges again just really grunging everything up a little bit so that it all matches that beautiful paper. I just worked my way through the entire piece little by little section by section uh, adding a little bit of dark wax to the crinoline parts and then uh, grunging up the grungy floral paper just a little bit and making sure that the whole entire black portion of it also had a good coat of wax as well. Once that was done this piece was finished and I absolutely love how it came out. And I love the fact that you can use the dark wax on just about any medium to add just a little bit of grunginess. project for today. I hope you liked it. I know I'm happy with how it came out. It was definitely a lot of work. Uh, you did not get to see all of the uh, little um, blunders and bloopers <laughs> behind the scenes because painting black and white together, uh, there were definitely a few little mistakes that I made and had to go back and fix. Uh, paint got swapped from one to the other and back and forth a couple times. And so there was some cleanup things that needed to happen and things that I didn't put in the video. <laughs> so just know that it was definitely a process. Anyway, um, I hope you did like the video and I, I, if you did, I would really appreciate it if you think about giving it a thumbs up and if you haven't yet, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Uh, for Tuesday, I have a little bit of a mixed bag, just some uh, odds and ends fall projects that I wanted to finish and get out of my kitchen before I start on um, working in Christmas stuff. So uh, there's a couple picture frames and a couple pumpkins and a few other little things. So I hope you'll join me on Tuesday for that. Uh, should be a fun video. Uh, listed in the description box below is my website. Uh, you can order any of the DIY projects products I use there and uh, then on to the big news uh, for me um, I signed up yesterday to start selling redesign with Prima products here in the cottage and I am really it's one of those decisions I've been tossing around for a little while and I really wanted to be able to offer uh, through my website and here at the shop a full range of furniture products, including transfers and molds and stencils and papers and paint and all of the things and kind of be a one-stop shop. So that's been kind of a goal for a little while. Um, I absolutely love Redesign's uh, products. I've been using them for a long time. Super great quality. Um, pri the price point is pretty decent and they have such a huge full range of different things to offer, which really totally excites me. Um, it's a little overwhelming because uh, I am 
not rich by any stretch of the imagination. And so I had to just kind of pick and choose the items that I would be bringing in at first. Uh, my goal is to, you know, expand a little bit as time goes on. But um, I did place my first order yesterday. Um, I am really, really excited to get that in. And I can hardly wait to start making some projects with it. And I cannot wait to show you guys the cool things that I've got coming. So um, just know that they will at some point be available on my website. Uh, and obviously if you're here in town, you'll be able to come pick them up here at the cottage. So that is my exciting news for today. And uh, again, I hope you will join me back here on Tuesday for my odds and ends fall cleanup. And until then, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And thank you so much for being here. I'll see you Tuesday. Bye.